Hey everybody, welcome to the stream. We're just getting everything set up. One moment too. All right, gotta love the first few minutes of a stream, it's always exciting. In today's stream, I am going to be doing some fun tutorials on your guys' suggestions. So if you have some thoughts or ideas, you can put, start thinking about them and put them in the comments. And in a little bit, I'll get to start drawing. And I just thought I would hang out with you guys because it has been a while since I've hung out with, with you guys in a live stream. So hey, everybody, thanks so much for joining the stream. I'm so excited um, to, to finally be able to do this. I was setting up the stream and I kid you not, the last stream I had was the first time I had my first batch of foster kittens in the studio and I streamed. That was months ago. So this has been fun. And of course I start the stream and what is my nose is itching. I want to sneeze so bad. <sighs> so yeah, it has been a long time and I've Purposely, one of the reasons that I moved from three videos a week to two videos a week was because I wanted to be able to stream more. And then I just have not been able to have even a half an hour of quiet to be able to stream. But all my roommates are gone right now and it appears to be quiet. So I thought, hey, let's do a fast little stream. So you guys are already coming up with some great ideas and I will look at those and take the suggestions in just a second. So keep coming up with those ideas so I can pick one out. But if you haven't watched today's video, I just did a, actually it was one of my lesson plans that I do for some of my actual art classes that I teach in person. And so I followed the lesson plan and taught it very similar to how if you sat in my class, how that would be. So we drew this fun little cat dragon. If you have not checked it out, um, that was today's video that was uploaded. So you can check it out after the stream or during the stream or simultaneously, you know, have me talking at uh, both both speakers. That'd be crazily weird. Um, but yeah, it was fun. So the fun thing about this tutorial was that you not only do we end up with a kind of a cool dragony creature but really the base that i teach you in that tutorial you could draw a cute cat or a cute dog as you can see it's very cat like so um you could draw a lot of cute things with that so it was a fun tutorial and if you want the actual lesson plans with the printable workout sheets um not workout sheets <laughs> get your exercise in <laughs> the worksheets that you can do and draw along with me with that um i have those on my etsy shop so all of those are in the video that I posted today. So, but I had a lot of requests over the last couple of days to do some tutorials and there's no way that I can do every single tutorial that you guys request. Um, unless I do things like this, which if this works out and is um, successful, maybe we'll do this more often where I'll just jump on and take tutorial ideas. Now, again, these, these will be things that are easy to teach. Like if you're wanting me to teach you how to paint the Mona Lisa, that's not going to happen in a live stream. Um, but if you wanted to learn how to draw a certain kind of animal or you have a problem drawing a certain part of a person, um, let me know in the, in the chat. So let's jump into the chat and see who's all here. Whole bunch of you guys and have lots and lots of suggestions. So we have how to draw a person, how to draw a uh, deer, rabbit, or turtle tutorial, kissing pigs or chihuahuas, a horse rearing, bunnies, tips on eye reflection or shading or anatomy. Those are some good ones. Those would be good ones for like a full tutorial. A pug dragon. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, goodness, they're going really fast. Um, more bunnies, more chihuahuas. Someone really wants chihuahuas. Uh, hello from Austria. Hi. Uh, how to draw an eye, a bunny. Uh, oh, goodness. I don't read that fast. Uh, create a character. That is what I'm thinking of to uh, doing something kind of fun with. So hang on to that. A mermaid pirate, a wolf growling. You just want me to say wolf, don't you? So I will mess up and say wolf. Um, oh, goodness. I'm going to so go back up here. Um, could you draw a dragon, please? And maybe post this stream later. Yes, the stream will, will be posted so that you guys can watch it later. 
Um, because we kind of did it, well, I mean, technically it really doesn't look like a dragon. I think I'll hold off on dragons. Um, I might do another tutorial on those in a week or two. Um, let's go ahead and, and just, I'm going to do a couple today. So if I don't do yours, then uh, I will try to get a couple in. But let's do a bunny because I think that's a good warm up for us. It's, bunnies are cute. They're not threatening unless you watch Mighty Python movies. <laughs> Um, yeah, so let's do that. So if you want to draw along with me, you can just get some regular paper and a pencil. I'm just using printer paper, um, cause that's what I like to sketch with and an erasable, uh, colored pencil, which you could wear, use just a regular, um, erasable pencil. Also, let me know how the audio is. It's been a while since I've set up my stream. So I think I have all the settings correctly, but can you hear me? Because the microphone's right, like right over you can't see it it's over here all right so let's do a bunny I have two well actually I think I only have one now um, that a uh, bunnies that live in my backyard they were uh, pets from somebody who um, owned them and then their bunnies had a bunch of other bunnies because that's what bunnies like to do and now they had too many bunnies so they just let them go which it's kind of cool and kind of sad at the same time. They seem to be, well, one seeming to do really, really well. Um, I haven't seen the other one in a while, but they kind of disappeared for two months and then popped back up. So maybe someone, because they're kind of tame, like you, they'll come right up to you if you have food. They don't like to be touched, but they'll come right up to you. So maybe someone was able to catch some of them and keep them as pets, but it's kind of fun. I don't know if it'll be fun this summer when it gets into my roommate's garden, but let's do a cute bun bun, as Bailey would say. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with it. Let's just kind of block in our our shape of our bunny. And I'll try to draw dark enough where you guys can see. So I'm gonna get that circle. How many of you guys have a hard time drawing circles? That is the top number one comment that I get uh, with people being frustrated with drawing is drawing the circle of doom. And so if you do, if you have a hard time drawing circles, um, the thing that I find, and I have a video on how to draw circles, which I talk about this, is to start without putting your pencil on the paper, get your hand going in that motion. And if you do it fast enough, you can actually kind of see the shape that it's going to be and then slowly apply pressure to your pencil where your pencil then touches the paper and you'll see that I you know it's kind of a multiple circle and because I'm sketching and I'm going lightly then I can go back later and kind of clean up clean up my sketch but it'll get your hand going in the right motion if I just try to draw a circle straight without getting it into uh, into a circle shape I, it comes off looking like the map of Guam so I can you'll notice I always you always see my hand going like this before it even gets it in there. I actually learned that from watching animators working at Disney draw and I would see they would go to start drawing the face and then get that hand going. I was like, why do they do that? So I began trying it. I was like, oh, boom. That's how they draw circles. So it worked well for me and then I kind of darkened in my circle. So this will be kind of the body. We'll have the bunny kind of maybe looking off this way. So I'm going to put another circle right over here. My little bunny head just overlapping a little bit so that's connected. Okay, so we got our little bunny head right there. And as it comes down, so he's looking kind of off this direction, so his ears are gonna go back this way. So kind of comes down at a little bit of a rounded point. So it's kind of like a weird teardrop shape that's kind of falling that way, if, if you can kind of, I don't know if you can see that. I always, when I'm drawing something, try to think of a shape that it resembles because um, if I do that, then it helps me to, to build it together, put it together. So it's like a kind of rounded point there and then really round there. And I'm not gonna worry about this line because I'm going to erase that line anyway. So there's our top of our head and our little bunny body. And I'm just gonna kind of bring down, because obviously it's not gonna come to these little points. So I'm just going to bring the skin, kind of wrap that. And maybe there'll be a little bit of indentation up at the top here. And then kind of flatten it out. 
Now, if your bunny is like listening to something, you'd have his little ears coming straight up. Um, if he's just kind of chilling, his ears are going to be like this. If he's hiding, they like to flatten their ears and be like, I'm a little fuzzy stone. I'm not real. You don't want to eat me. So you have to kind of decide if you're, what, what your mood of your bunny is. I'm just going to put a, a loopy right back here and just see how I like that. Drawing really light. That way, if I need to, I can erase it and move things around. So it's not really, it doesn't come back to a little point. Sometimes we want to make these like balloons on them, but they're actually, you know, nice and wide. And the skin kind of wraps around the inside. So I look like this, like that. So this is the outside of the ear and this is the inside of the ear. And we will just have this other one kind of overlapping right like that. Bunnies! Now, before I get into going in more detail, I'm going to go ahead and take my eraser. I'm going to use this one because it's cool and why not? So this is an actual eraser pen um, and it's called a click eraser, but it lost its clicking powers. <laughs> so I don't know how I'm going to use it after, after the eraser part needs to be clicked up more, but I'm just going to kind of clean that up. And this is just kind of a fun sketch. So I'm not too worried about it. All right, so let's put in his little eye. So we'll go here at the nose and we're gonna kind of have this like invisible line going from his nose back to his ear. And right, I'm gonna put it right about in the middle. Put a little circle right there for his little, his little bunny eye. And you could keep it a total circle. I'm gonna put a little bit of lemon points to it. So a lemon shape to me is a circle that has two distinct little points. So it's like a little circle and then point. So I have a little point right here and a little point right there. Just like that. My little, my little rabbit eye. Now before I color this in, I'm going to find my shine so I can protect my shine. And I'm going to draw a little circle for the shine there. Uh, a trick with it is sometimes we draw our shine smaller than we mean it to be because we think of the outside of that line as being the shine. So draw slightly bigger than what you think you're gonna need it because when you go to shade this in, it, it begins to look smaller. See how now it looks much smaller um, than it was before. So you can always add more into that if your shine is too big, but it's hard to take the pencilette out as, as neatly. So there we go. It's one of those little red-eyed bunnies because I'm using a red pencil. Let's put his little nose in. We'll just have a little kind of little, I feel like his little lips would come out a little bit more. Oh, he's so cute. All right, clean up a little bit more. So he's kind of facing towards us, his body, and then his head's looking off this way. So I'm just going to put a little bit of an indication of his shoulder right here. It looks like I'm, I'm walking up to see him and he sees me and realizes she's not buying the bunny rock I run so he's about ready to go pew off that way so I'm just gonna put in just some tiny little little bunny paws I don't think that there would be very much detail because they're kind of like I don't know if you've ever seen a cat when they go into their little meatloaf thing and they're just like their skin just kind of envelops over their legs and they don't look like they have any legs. I think bunnies are the same way. They just kind of not a lot. You don't see their paws a lot when they're, at least the front ones. You might see the back ones. And then maybe you see just a little hint of his little bunny tail. Probably not, but it's cute so I'm drawing it. <laughs> And maybe we'll put like a little, little plant in his mouth. He's already in my roommate's garden. It's not so much that they like to eat her strawberries, which is going to be a problem when the strawberries start blooming, but they like to dig holes in her garden. And so I'll go out there and there's these little tiny little burrow divots all in her flower beds. And I'm like, no bunnies, if you want to stay in our yard, you cannot burrow little divots in my roommate's garden because she will turn into Elmer Fudd and it'll be a wabbit season, that's for sure. Maybe a little bit of a hint there, and I'm just gonna use the side of my pencil and just kind of shade inside of the ear, just a little bit. 
And we're just about done with a little bit of shadowing on the back here. Just kind of push it back a little bit. But there's our cute little bunny. Yay. Talking about my back. Tambry. What is everyone saying? I don't even know. It's hard to read and draw and talk at the same time. So, yeah, when I'm in the midst of drawing tutorial, don't always read the comments. So hopefully everyone's being kind and polite. All right, what would you like to see next? Let's do a number two tutorial. Let's do that. So I've seen a lot of requests for hands. There's a raccoon, horse rearing. I think I have a horse rearing tutorial on my channel, I think. One time I had art block for three months. Oh, that can be challenging. Valerie, can you, can you teach us how to draw flowers? A dog, how about some vegetables for the bunny? A fox, a horse resting, knitwears. I don't know what a knitwear is. Mm, a bat, hands, dragon head. Cat loaf. <laughs> Draw a pie face. Raven paw is from Warrior Cos. Okay. Um, did you see that Caroline bag I sent you on Instagram? I'll have to look and see if I can see it after the stream. Oh, knit sweaters. Gotcha. Um, how to draw Kelpie, a Basset Hound, hands please. So let's do hands, because I've had several different people talk about hands. Um, and that again can be an entire video series on its own. But I will give you a couple of tips and tricks on drawing hands because hands used to be something that I absolutely hated drawing. And so I would draw my people with like their hands behind their backs or, you know, holding a bunch of flowers so you didn't see their hands. Until I just finally did um, hand study, which I just took pieces of paper many pieces of paper and just drew a ton of hands. I'm just going to move it over here so I'm using all my paper. So for my hands, I'm going to break it down to shape. Let's look at my hand. So when you look at your hands again, I'm always finding those shapes. And so I find this nice square shape right in here. So the things that we forget when we're doing hands is the palm is its own great shape. In fact, it's kind of like there's like a, a line here, a curved line here, a line here, a line here. So it's not even really a shape. It's a five-sided. Oh dear, is that a pentagon? Is that a five-sided? Hmm. And then we also forget about the wrist and that we just have the arm kind of come straight into here where you really have a good indentation. Some people have very thin wrists. I have kind of medium wrists, but if you can really like think about this bone right here, it can really help. The thing that I had the hardest time with drawing hands was my fingers. I drew my fingers like little sausages and it was, it was not, uh, it wasn't what I wanted. So let's do that. So everyone take your non-dominant hand because this is not an art challenge vi uh, video where we're drawing with our opposite hand. But I found something out very interesting. This rabbit trail, bunny trail. I, cause I, I'm left-handed, but I went to cut something and I was cutting it with my right hand, but I wasn't in the right position. So I moved the scissors to my left hand to cut. And I realized, and I'm 41 years old, and I just realized this about myself, that I cannot cut with my left hand. I, and I think the reason is, is because left-handed scissors are really rare. I mean, everyone has right-handed scissors. And so growing up, I just learned how to cut with my right hand. And my poor left hand, <sighs> he's left out. He doesn't know how to cut. So right hand's like, yes, finally, I get to do something that lefty can't do. And we're like, high five. So we're working together. Anyway, back from my bunny trail. Everyone take your non-dominant hand and look at it and you can put it in whatever position you want. I'm going to put it right over here. Let's, let's just have it like, like, let's do this. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Let's find a good hand position. Let's go. See, my my view of it is different than if I put it here. So you'll have to get your own view. So I'm going to look at my hand. And I am going to draw that kind of box shape right here. So my thumb is going to be over here, my fingers here, and my wrist here. Okay? 
and my hand that I'm modeling with is casting a shadow. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put, until I get, you get comfortable drawing this, just put a circle right in here for that wrist so that you know you can pivot things and that you kind of will bring this hand into that wrist. So the next thing I'm going to do is when you look at your hand and your palm, read my palm, there's just a really big shape right here where your thumb is connecting this big muscle. And it and because it can do, you know, it's posable, I'm going to block out that shape right here for my posable thumb. So I know that this right in here can move. That can fold and bend. Then we have the side palm, which um, any artist knows that's where you get your lead when you're drawing and you everyone get that smudge. <laughs> so you have you have that right in there. And then you have this right here, which technically is like individual thing, you know, because it, it all curls in together. But I tend to think that. So in your mind, if you can remember, your hand bends here, it can bend there a little bit and bend here because we just have this little curling ability. Um, that can really help you. So I'm going to start off with my thumb and my thumb has a knuckle here. So not only can it bend inward, but it can bend down right here, and that's right at this little base. And then it has another bend here. So from here to here, it can't curl, it can bend, but this is, you know, this is a straight bone there. So as it comes out from that, and take it, take your hand and bring it next to, what, what comment am I reading? Okay, I'll go back and try to read these comments. But this knuckle here comes right about here. So don't make your knuckle bend way up here. You're not making this a really long thumb. So, and then your thumb ends right about here. So think about that in your distance. So right over there. And right there, just like so. All right, now we're gonna bring out our fingers and I'm just gonna have this nice arch right here to start off with. So if you look at your hands, it has this nice, some people's hands are a little bit different, like my, my pinky's really short, maybe yours is short too. But, uh, um, as we go along here, it gets really short right there. So I'm just going to block in my fingers. It does look like someone wearing mittens. All right, and then drawing in those fingers and getting them where they kind of taper a little bit at the end is gonna help them not to be as like stubby. All right, so there is once we kind of get this hand down, then you can begin to move these shapes around a little bit. So instead of drawing it flat, if you can figure this out, then you begin to draw that 3D. You know how you draw the the 3D, you know, box that you know has all the four sides on it. You kind of think about that and looking at your hand and how your hand moves. Then you can begin to practice this out. And seriously, it's just about taking and practicing your hands out over and over and over. I mean, seriously, literally like hundreds of hands I drew. And it'll, it'll still be something that if I'm just kind of doodling and practicing, I'll practice drawing hands because I'm like, okay, that, that pointer finger is a little bit long. So this was kind of a really quick little tutorial on hands. I'm pretty sure if you look at my drawing people playlist, I have a video, maybe even two videos 
on drawing hands. They might even be slightly different techniques. So if one technique doesn't work for you when you're learning, don't think this is like the hard and fast method that you have to draw this way. There are so many different ways to learn how to, to draw and it just kind of clicks with each individual person. So the way it clicked for me might, might not click for you, but there is a way that will just do it. But the one thing that's just crossed the board is practicing. But there we go. Quick little overview on the hands. All right, let's go ahead and do, let's see, we've been on for 25 minutes. I wanna try and do at least half an hour stream. So let's go ahead and do one more tutorial. So if you guys have any suggestions, you can put those in the comment section and I will see about picking it out. Maybe something not so intense so I can kind of chat with you in chat while we're doing this. A little pushing cat, detailed hooves, a dog. How do you go about drawing a nose when someone's head is tilted slightly downwards? Hmm. Dragon head. Um, hope I'm having a good day. Can you draw an owl? Draw an anime girl, please. Shading, an owl. A horse jumping, an owl, a fairy fox, flowers, 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 a bat, Ooh. an owl. So the same person asking for owl or is a bunch of you guys asking for owl? No, a couple of lots of you guys are asking for owls. Okay, majority rules on the owl, which again, I think I have a video tutorial on drawing owls. But a lot of these ideas that you guys have, I'm gonna go back after the stream is over and read through the comments and write down some of the more popular ideas. And those might come out as future art lesson videos like today's video. So if you weren't here at the beginning of the stream, today's video that I uploaded was my tutorial on how to draw this cute little cat dragon creature. So if you ever want to learn how to draw a cat or a dragon-ish kind of creature that's non-lizard based, based um, check this video out. So, and I also have a um, lesson plan if you, if you want like printable worksheets and things like that. I have a link to where you can get that on my Etsy shop. So after this one is done, um, you can check that out. But again, put your guys' suggestions for what you'd like to learn in future tutorials in the uh, comments of, and I will make a list of them. So an owl, that's gonna be nice. Fun, easy-ish one. So I'm going to start off with kind of an egg shape. Make sure I'm going to frame here. There we go. So a nice little egg shape, kind of standing up on its own. And I'm going to just cut off the very bottom of that because he's going to be sitting on a branch. So there we go. And I'm also going to put a little bit of a flat on the top for where his little, they're not his ears, they're just kind of little head tufts, feather tufts, um, so I'm make that kind of flat. And then I'm gonna kind of curve that, like almost like a really gentle um, smiley face, like right there. This is the top of our little owl. And then on each corner, I'm gonna bring it down. So we have these, look like little horns. He's a devil bird. <laughs> Bye, cats and puppies. Thanks for joining the stream. All right, and then I'm just gonna follow this, this shape that we have. I might just narrow it a little bit as it comes down. So it's kind of fuller up here and then just narrows out just a little bit because his wings are gonna be here. So that's kind of like the shoulders and so as, um, as they narrow down, this will be kind of the widest point would be where his where his wings are at. Now, at this point, I'm going to really, really lightly draw and divide this owl in half. And then right at the top here, I'm going to come down just before it starts getting pretty wide. And I'm going to put another line right in here. And that's going to help me let me know where the eyes and the, the mouth are going to, to be. Your channel is the one that got me into drawing. Thank you, Melody. That's so sweet. All right, so on either side of this, I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna block in two large circles for his eyes. 
they're not going to be totally like they're going to not be a full circle apart but they're not touching either they're just kind of hanging out <laughs> All right, and then after this, we're going to put just a little kind of V shape right down in between. Right there for his little, little beak. Yeah, beak. And then I'm going to put some ruffly lines on top of it for like the feathers. So there's kind of our, our base shape for the setup for the, the face of the owl. And then I'm going to inside drawing his actual eyeballs because he actually has like these f most else some else depending on the type of owl um these feathered dishes almost look like domes and the feathers kind of like whoo out i don't know if that helps like filter more light into their into their eyes or not but i'm going to put his actual eyes right in there and kind of get those shines in darken them in a little bit there Hello, uh, ma'am who is drawing. If you're reading this, I subbed and not are, and knots are, oh, notifications are on. I was like, knots are on? Well, what's off? I hope you're having a good day. Thank you, Shooter. Thanks for the sub and for notifications. All right. So to give a little bit of detail up here, I'm just going to kind of add some little feather lines that are going to go up from the eyes up to the corners of his ears. Now, owls can sometimes have like a really kind of grumpy face, serious face. Just depends on how you design their little feather. You can give it some feather details around the sides here like that. He's kind of a cute owl. Like there's a whole bunch of, there's so many different types of owls. Kind of changing up the shapes kind of changes that. And then for his wings, I'm gonna just start right up here Kind of right where the eye line is and i'm just going to draw in just kind of a curving inward line it just kind of curves in just a little bit for one wing and the same thing over here for this other wing over here boom uh wrapped wind says hi when you draw your hands on focus and drawing gets blurry like the, the camera, possible. It could possibly get blurry. Sadie, subscriber here. Thanks, Sadie, for the subscription. The camera is a tad bit blurry. There's that better. I have it off of autofocus, so it shouldn't be doing that. But it's cloudy outside, so if you guys see, like, it get lighting and dark. Lighting, that's a word. Light and dark. Um could be from that but if it's the whole thing is getting blurry um that's just kind of the internet so hopefully when the stream goes up live or goes up officially on my channel it won't be live then hopefully that will clarify but i can't do anything about it if the whole thing is going blurry like pixelated kind of blurry yeah so the we're gonna put in his toes right here and i'm gonna put three little kind of oval shapes so kind of showing his little toes there. I really actually don't know how many toes an owl has. I think they have three in front and one in back, but I'm not positive. So there we go. We'll just fake it like we know, and then afterwards we can research. Or if some of you guys know, then you can tell me in the comments. I love the 100 character design you did. Thank you. I still have a few more to go. I was going to film some for this week, but I still have not found the little stack of paper that I have for it. I, I cleaned my studio, um, almost all of it, and I placed it somewhere. That's the problem with cleaning things is you put things away and then I don't remember where they are. So I have paper that I can cut up for it. So I have like, like this paper here and then I just cut it up to that size, but I haven't cut it up because that would take all of five seconds. I just don't have time for this, but I'm hoping I only have like, I think two or three more sessions of the hundred character draw challenge and then it's done. All right. So 
Owls have three toes and one in back. Yay. Okay. So we did it right. That's so good. All right. Before I draw the anything else, I'm, like his tail, I'm going to put in the branch that he's sitting on. So I have a little bit wider here, and then as it comes out, it tapers out a little bit. He's chilling in a, a little tree there. I'll have it kind of come up on either side. It's kind of look like my my clockwork owl picture that I did. I don't have my business card here. I have it on the back, but I have this owl that's made out of gears and cogs and things like that. And uh, he's sitting on a tree branch just like this. So then I'm going to make just a little bit of a U shape behind here for his little tail feathers. What's the most fascinating documentary about owls and how quiet they are when they fly. It's unbelievable. So then I can go back and kind of clean up my drawing a little bit. But there we have a cute little owl. So I'm curious how many of you guys actually drew along with us in these um, three tutorials or at least one of them. Let me know. And if this is something fun, if, if you think, hey, you should do this more often, or if it was just craziness and me trying to actually explain something while drawing and reading comments at the same time was just a bit too much for me, but I enjoyed it. I think it was fun. Hopefully you guys did. So let me know if, if you enjoyed it. And also if there is other things you'd like to learn how to do, because if this was fun, then I will make this like a regular thing that I come on and do little tutorials. I always feel bad because you guys have so many great suggestions like in the comments for this stream was literally hundreds of comments asking for really great suggestions and I and I wish I could be able to draw all of them um, but maybe if I can do more live streams where I tackle some of these little ideas and um, things that you'd like to learn how to draw maybe I can get through more of them I think that would be fun so yeah if, if you did enjoy it give the video a thumbs up that way, even after the live stream's over, I can kind of keep track of, of seeing if this is a uh, future endeavor. So I think that would be really, really fun. Please do a dragon head straight on. Okay, I will put that on my list. I know I said that I, because I kind of did this guy and he's a dragon, but he's not a lizard dragon base. So I don't think, I try to rotate my, my most popular requests for tutorials, which are cats, dogs, dragons, and horses have always been the top requested. Um, and so I don't want to do like too many of the same thing in a row. So I try to do a cat one and then I try to do a dog one and I try to do a horse one. And so I did, of course, this one kind of falls under the cat. I was trying to to do two of them at once. So I was doing like a cat and a dragon, but really this is kind of like cat and bird with horns. Um, and then I did a horse, how to draw a horse head video not too long ago. I think it was like four or five videos ago. So I think dogs are up next. Not that I won't have a, a different tutorial in between, but of the, the four popular ones, I think dogs are up next. So if there's a certain kind of dog, I saw a lot of pugs, lots of people ask, but I think I have a pug video already. I'll have to look. Um, so I've seen a lot of foxes too. Maybe I'll do a fox. I have tried actually to do an updated fox tutorial video and it just never turns out and I always end up scrapping it. So I might have to do a fox study for myself. Get my fox skills on. Fox on fleek. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, this is kind of in uh, been fun. I've missed hanging out with you guys in a stream and, and drawing with you guys. And also, these don't have to be like animal related tutorials. I do a lot of animal uh, tutorials because you guys ask for a lot of animal tutorials. But I'm, I have on my list to do things about drawing backgrounds. Um, I'm trying to figure out an easy way to explain perspectives that is, you know, more information than just the you know the horizon line with the road going through it that kind of like vanishing point thing so um i have some ideas on doing a video on shading and shadowing so yeah you just let me know and i will see if i can get in there so yeah perspective is hard 
because there's so many points of perspective because we kind of learn the the one point perspective where it has like just the singular vanishing point and then there's two point perspective which something's coming at you you know it's if it's hard to explain drawing it's even harder to explain verbally <laughs> so i'm not even gonna try are there tutorials on drawing humans yes i have a whole playlist on drawing people actually i think i have two playlists i have drawing humans and then drawing people 101 something like that. Um, so you can check those out, but they're kind of older videos. So if there's something in there that just, hopefully as, as I progress in my drawing skills, I'm also progressing in my explaining skills. Because when I'm teaching like a live class with my students, if I am explaining something and they're not quite getting it, of course they can stop me and ask me and I can re-explain it or you know, sit down with them and, and, and draw it next to them so they can really get it. So trying to do this on a in a video is a little bit more challenging. So do I know or like Gravity Falls? I have, have I ever watched an episode? I know what it is. I don't have television. Hmm, I'm one of those people. I, I have like Netflix and I, I don't think it's on Netflix. I'll look. Um, I've had several people ask if I've seen it. Um, I just found out about like Steven Universe last year and something else the year before that someone introduced me to it um so slowly i'm i used to be like on the spot with cool animations you know cartoons and things but life and stuff do i watch the office i have seen a couple episodes and they're hilarious use hulu that's where i watch it. okay i think I, I think my membership is still going i was i was debating whether or not to not have hulu because I have Hulu and Amazon Prime and Netflix, and I'm trying to cut back on my budget for entertainment, and I don't watch Hulu very often anymore. Let's say update Steven Universe on Hulu then. Because I've, oh, Adventure Time, that was the other one that you guys got me hooked on. So I finally finished Adventure Time. That was good. Yay. Um, any tutorials on drawing clothes? I think I have a couple on like drawing skirts and hats. Yeah, they're they're older, so I can't quite remember all that they have there. Have I ever tried pastels? No. Like, as you guys know, I don't like oil paints. I love oil paintings. I love artists who do oil paints, but personally, for me to use oil paints, ugh. but right up there, pastels. And I think they're gorgeous, but they don't stay where they're supposed to stay. I put them there, and then you, you like look at it and breathe, and it just goes, I don't care what kind of paper you use or what kind of spray you put on it. My oil or my pastels just go everywhere. So I'm not a big fan. I love how it looks. And one of my friends is amazing with pastels. And I'm like, I want to do that. And I went out and bought some once and then I cried. And yeah, so no, pastels are not my favorite. <laughs> Can I do a tutorial on badgers? Hmm, I don't think I've done a badger one. I'll see about putting that on the list. A tutorial on bridges. Oh, man-made things are hard, but I do have to, I actually have been commissioned and I need to do it. Ugh, I've been putting it off. To do like one of the biggest watercolors that I've ever done. Like, you know those sheets of watercolor paper that you have to buy individually because the sheets of paper are massively huge. So someone, um, commissioned me to do that and it's a painting of a bridge in our city um, where I live and so I have to paint the dunes and then the the North Bend Bridge and I'm a blah so maybe I will I will uh, take you guys along the journey with that one and give you some tips on how maybe not to draw a bridge can you do a tutorial about how to avoid making humans look stiff um, that would be gesture drawing. I have a video on gesture drawing, um, in there, but maybe I'll do an updated video on it because it's always good to talk about gesturing. Make a tutorial on raccoons. We have raccoons. They try to eat my chickens, so they're not high on my favorite animal list, but they are pretty cute. Tell me I've watched Lucifer. No, I haven't. So I can't tell you. If I did, I'd be lying, and that's not very kind of me. Hey, Alex. 
How do you overcome your fear of showing art to other people? Do we ever overcome that? We just learn to hide it really, really well. Um, I suppose the best way is just to know that art is, is different for every single person. So something that you really enjoy art style wise, someone else isn't, and that's okay. That's the beauty of art. And just trying not to take it personal when someone else doesn't think your art is art. That's, it's, it's hard. That's, that's a hard one. Um, can you tell us how you began to draw? I just started when I was a kid to start drawing, but when I became serious at it is, is, um, back when I was in high school, I have a very, very old video, um, draw my life, which takes you through the whole, uh, tale of my, of my illustrious life. <laughs> um, let's see. Could you do a video on story? on composition. I'm struggling with it. Me too. I don't even know if my pieces have good composition. <laughs> I, I will give you the theories of composition. Um, I have to really actually, see, I've never actually gone to art college. So some of the big art terms I never learned. I just kind of figured them out as I went, but I don't know what it's called or how to explain it like artsy ecology wise. My method of teaching art is to teach students how to teach themselves because that's how I learned everything pretty much. I mean, I took a couple little art classes here and there. Um, and the biggest thing that I got from there was just encouragement from my art teacher um, to, to continue drawing. But to how to look at someone else's art and go, I, I want to create artwork like that. What makes that artwork look like that and go from there. So, yeah. How about making a gang of kitty dragons? <laughs> That'd be the cutest little gang ever. <laughs> Can you do a video on drawing um, angel dragons? We'll just put a halo on the, I don't know. <laughs> I guess that would be kind of um, up to how you envision an angel dragon. That would be an interesting thing. Can I do a video about color? I love color. I should do some color theories and how I try to figure out my colors because sometimes my colors, man, not good. I'm like, why did I color her with green and magenta hair? I don't know why. Can I do a comic tutorial? That's a possibility for a future video series. I think that would be fun. Definitely not one that you could do. I think in, in one video, it, it would probably be like a one-on-one series. Can I do a video on butterflies? Them's, them's hard to get the symmetrical wings, but I have a couple tips and tricks on that. So um, we'll see about that. Do a video about drawing doves. Fun story about doves. My dad raised pigeons and doves when I was a kid. And pigeons are tough, man. And so they withstood me. But doves, they're just like little delicate little glass birds. And so my dad would always let me hold his pigeons. And they were really tame. They just sit on you and poop on you and all that. And then he gave me his doves. And I went, and I, it was, I was like four. And I grabbed it. And the dove went flying and feathers went everywhere. Yeah, because when you scare a dove, they just lose all their feathers. So, um, More Disney Princess comics. Oh, I love my Disney Princess. That was so long ago that I did those. Now they're like a big thing. Like there's so many amazing artists out there that are drawing like Disney Princess comics. probably mad at you for asking that a million times. Damn Bray, I'm so mad at you. <laughs> as long as you're being nice, I don't get mad at people. I only get upset when people are being mean to other people. Then then you see the angry eyes. But your voice is nice. Thank you. I recently had someone tell me my voice was hideous. <laughs> so there we go. Voices are like art. Some person's voice might sound nice to you and, and to another person does not sound nice. So <laughs> you have a dove named Archimedes. I love that name. That is a great name. You just call, I just called you Vlad. That's nice. I like the way Vlad. It's very, is it Russian? It sounds Russian. 
Hilda is fun. Is that the cartoon? I didn't see the comment before that, but Hilda is a great cartoon. I just started watching it with my niece, and then I promised her I wouldn't watch it without her. So um, now I have to find out how much she can watch TV, and I can watch TV at the same time. Who is my favorite YouTube animator to watch? Oh, tough question. Don't ask me the favorites. Um, um, I want to make sure I say his channel right because he is fantastic. So if you are wanting to, especially if you want to learn um, how to draw animals, animate animals, so good. Hang on, let me find him. He was a Disney animator. There's a lot. There's a lot of really, a lot of the Disney animators that I really followed and learned a lot from back in the 90s um, when 2D animation was an awesome thing um, are now doing uh, animation here on YouTube. We're doing classes and things like that. And why can't I find him? Because I want to find him. Um... Hold on. I think he just put a video up a little bit ago. One of those things out there. Um, like his name totally fell out of my head. And my computer's, my phone is being so slow. But of the, the animators that draw little kind of cute little vlogs, I love, um, oh man. Names and me today are not friends added to the pressure of trying to do this on a live stream. This is exciting. Let's watch Valerie surf through her phone trying to find a name. It's not coming. I swear he did one just like a day or two ago, but of course I follow so many people on YouTube that trying to find one certain person. There it is. The art of Aaron Blaze. I didn't know if it was after his name or not. But Aaron Blaze does like amazing, I don't know if you guys can see him, boom right there. So he has all these great animation, like here he did a live stream, almost two hour live stream on, on animating this bear, uh, polar bear thing. Oh. Yeah, Aaron Blaze is great. Anyway. All right, now that that was really boring. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, favorite color. I have too many favorite colors. Couldn't tell you a favorite color that I have. Because it's all really good. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave it off at that. That was fun kind of having a little chit-chat with you at the end of our, our little drawing tutorial. Um, if you drew any of these along with me and you want to post them on social media, then... Um, tag me in your photos. I would love to see them. So, yeah. Or if you do this little guy, I'd like to see him. So, that's really great. All right, guys. Whoa, we almost had an hour. Almost. You know, here I'm like rejoicing if I can stream for an hour at one time. There's YouTubers out there that stream for like 37 days straight of streaming. <laughs> like, I don't know how you guys do it. So, yes, I do follow Mr. Blaze. I had the chance to meet him and I totally didn't even know he was there because I was at Eugene Comic Con, which is tiny Comic Con. And so, of course, I didn't think to look to see if anyone big was there, kind of like the whole Mark Kistler thing. And yeah, he was there, found out about it after we were all done and he left. <laughs> I was like, what? I even walked past him and I wasn't paying attention that that was him. Anyway, that's another story. So, okay, guys, I am going to let you guys go. And thank you for watching the stream, hanging out with me, drawing with me, and again, letting me know any other suggestions in the comments. Go watch today's video if you haven't watched it already, and keep being awesome. God bless you guys. We'll see you later.